Well, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is the reds have all been adjusted, uh, ranging anywhere from 3.2 to 3.5 to 3, uh, 3.7, 3.5. So they're ready to go. They are ready to fire up. Uh, on the other hand, the whites, I ran out of acid. So here's a little tip. Always make sure to buy and have extra acid on hand. I only bought three pounds this year. I thought it was going to be enough. I had a pound and a half left over from last year. But uh, last minute, we had a couple guys join in and uh, ask if they could make wine with us. And we said, sure. So I never bought more acid to, uh, to adjust their must. That's partially why we were a little short. And uh, second, I just didn't expect the uh, must to come out so high with pH and sugar. Uh, second, I uh, didn't adjust my refractometer properly. So there is an adjustment you can make on your refractometer, calibration rather, I should say. And uh, I did not calibrate it yesterday so when i actually calibrated it after i had finished everything i was actually one brick off so everything is actually 26 bricks on the uh on the reds and uh, a brick down so the chardonnay is 23 the riesling's 23 and the sauv blanc is 25 still high but uh, a point down makes pretty good difference so uh, I am going to order and hopefully be able to get another pound or two of acid uh, via more wine here in the next day or two. I'd like to get the, uh, the whites adjusted. I had about two, three hundred uh, grams left over and I adjusted the must down on the Riesling a little bit and on the Sauv Blanc. Barely moved the needle on the Sauv Blanc, uh, but I didn't touch the Chardonnay at all. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up some of this yeast. Uh, in particular, D80 and the Rock Pile uh, RP15. So, again, uh, I didn't get any yeast for these guys who joined in last minute. So, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. But the, here's the one thing with yeast. It, pro, well, it multiplies, right? So, I can use these two to get our stuff fired up and add a little bit. To the other bins and it should be fine we should have no problems because as long as it fires up it's going to reproduce and you're going to have enough yeast to go through the entire uh the entire batch uh you do reconstitute it with a little bit of go firm to get it going and the go firm is basically just cheap insurance you're making sure that that your uh yeast has enough nutrients to fire up here's another little tip so I'm using this staff here to push down our must and mix the uh, acid in. Always keep a bucket of sanitizer ready to go. When I'm done, I rinse it off with the hose. I put it in the bucket, sanitize it, hang it up. It's ready to go tomorrow when we need it again. And then uh, once the yeast gets going, about halfway through fermentation, plus or minus, we're going to add, actually it says here a third. But a couple days into the fermentation, I always add a little bit of Fermaid O to my must, which again is just another uh, yeast nutrient. Uh, I mix it right into the uh, must. I don't reconstitute it. I just powder it on top, mix it every time I do my knockdown, uh, which is two, three times a day. When we knock down the cap, I'll put this stuff on top of the cap and then mix it in and it's fine. So again, cheap insurance. Guys, these are like two, three dollars, whatever the hell they are, per packet. And I just wanna make sure that my must has enough nutrients to get it to ferment all the way to dry. Uh, that's another point I wanna make. You know, a lot of the old timers will say, oh, what are you doing? You're adding all these chemicals to your wine. And you know, in, in, in one way I could see their perspective, right? Wine, natural wine. Uh, where they're from ferments dry on its own. But here in Chicago, when we get our grapes from California, uh, 
you're kind of playing Russian roulette if you let it ferment on its own yeast because the skins of the grapes actually have yeast on them. So part of the problem that we run into is you can have a very high brick wine like we do here with this Cabernet and that wild yeast may or may not get you to dry. And if you spent $100 a lug on some really high-end Cabernet, you don't want a sweet Cabernet at the end of the day. So we hit it with sulfite initially, and notice it's not fermenting at all. We hit it with sulfite, and then we hit it with cultured yeast, which the cultured yeast is a strong fermenter. It's gonna ferment it to dry. Uh, 99.5% of the time, unless your bricks are so high that it's not able to get it all the way to dry. And that's why, like I said, I keep a little 1118 on hand all the time, just in case. So, uh, yes, we do add cultured yeast. We do add yeast nutrient to our must because it's very cheap insurance for a very large investment, right? You're spending a couple thousand dollars a year on grapes. You want to make sure your wine is the absolute best it could possibly be at the end of the day. So here's another little note. That bin was Cabernet. This is the uh, Zinfandel blend. You can see the difference. We got a ton of juice already going here. And mixing these is like night and day difference. Mixing the Cabernet is like mixing porridge. It's uh, so, so thick. I mean, it's really, really a good shoulder workout. Uh, the Zinfandel is much larger berry, uh, and it juices much, much quicker. So, all right, I'm going to get some yeast fired up here. I'm going to pour it on, on top of the must, and I am not going to mix it into the wine. The wine is still a little bit cold, so, you know, just like when you leave a glass of cold water on the countertop and you come back an hour later, the... Uh, First swig of the water is warm on top, but then as you start drinking it, the center of it's cold. Same thing with this wine. So we're just going to pour the yeast on top, let that warmer must get the yeast fired up, and then tomorrow we'll come back and mix all of that yeast down into, uh, into the must. So basically, this is our cold soak period, right? We got this stuff on Saturday. We crushed it. It sat all day Sunday, and we're going to get it fired up. Pretty much it'll be fired up on Monday, and we'll start knocking down the cap Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So right now, we're just getting it to temperature. Thank goodness uh, you can see in Chicago here, uh, middle of October. We're kicking right around 70 degrees, which is great. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to turn on a bunch of heaters to get this stuff going. Uh, but, you know, we've had some really incredible weather last couple days. Very, very conducive to getting our uh, must fired up and the wine fermenting. So pretty lucky so far this year. Uh, like I said, with the whites, we're going to order up some more, uh, some more acid here to try to get this pH down a little bit more so we don't have a flat wine. And uh, hopefully we'll get that in the next day or two before we uh, really get it fired up. So... Okay, let me get some yeast going and I'll uh, show you guys how I do this. 